Hello everybody, my name is Ryan or MNR Productions, and welcome to my review of the LEGO Star Wars Han Solo movie Moloch's Land Speeder. Its set number is 75210. It includes 464 pieces as well as four minifigures according to the box, although I don't really count the two Corellian hounds, so I'm gonna just say this set has two minifigures, and its official retail price is 40 US dollars. In the background of the box art, you'll see some TIE fighters flying around in the shipyards of Corellia. So Moloch's Land Speeder and Han Solo's Land Speeder are from that same planet they're from the same scene basically that's where we've seen them in the trailer at least up to this point when I'm recording this video so that's what we know about that if you do enjoy this review of the Molox land speeder please remember to give it a like it does help the channel anyways let's go ahead and take a closer look at our too many figures and the Corellian hounds here is Moloch it looks like Moloch's wearing some pretty cool robes I love the print on it it's very continuous straight down from the torso to the legs it also uses the brand new kind of dress legs that Lego had been using the regular Lego brick for but now has finally made a mold for which I really really like. They also use this on the Barra Safi in the Clone Troopers and Jedi Battle Pack released in April of 2018 as well. So you can see they even printed onto the back of these legs which is incredible. That's something you don't see with regular Lego minifigures. So it's great to see that Lego is able to fit a print on the back of here and kind of finish down the bottom of those robes on the back end. It also looks like you can see kind of some tentacles coming out of the back here. I'm not sure if that's what they are but they very well may be. The head mold is also another incredible piece of art with some great prints on it with a lot of good little details. I love the kind of scaling that we get as we go down the back here. It kind of reminds me of an armadillo. I'm sure that's what it's partly based off of, honestly. If we remove that, you'll find that there is a little hood here, so you definitely would have the option to put on the hood if this was the real life character, I suppose. And that is the head mold in all of its glory. It's a giant piece and very, very cool at that. So it is an exclusive to this set as of April 2018, although I guess that could change in the future if Moloch is released in another set from the Han Solo movie, but as of now that hasn't happened, so a very cool and exclusive minifigure. Here is Rebolt. I assume Rebolt is Moloch's sidekick, but I'm not 100% sure. He does come with this little Indiana Jones style whip to probably whip those Karelian hounds to chase after Han Solo and Kira, but who knows exactly yet because we haven't seen the movie. He has that kind of new headpiece there, or new helmet rather, which is kind of representing a little bit of cloth look to it as well. You can kind of see there's a little bit of waviness to it on the sides there. It also has that kind of same scaliness to it on the top as we see on Moloch. Not quite as pronounced, but it's a similar style. The face is pretty neat as well, and if we take that head off, you'll find that there's a second face around back, a little bit more of a disgruntled looking face, I suppose, a little bit more upset than this one, which is just kind of like an action-y face, I suppose. Rebolt does have some kind of snowy camo there to his torso and leg print, so that's really nice. You can also see it's printed on the waist and the bottom of the feet even, so a lot of good prints on the two minifigures included, and that's the back of him with a little backpack, it appears. I can't tell for sure, but it does appear to be a backpack, so that is our Rebolt minifigure. And lastly, we do get a pair of Karelian Hounds in this set. We already saw this minifigure in Han Solo's Land Speeder, but you get two of them in this one as opposed to one of them in Han Solo's Land Speeder set, so it's the same exact design as we saw there. It's got a very cool face print with some very menacing looking teeth. I love the eyes on the side, and overall it's a great design. It's a very nice white color color to it so it works really well. That is the Karelian Hound. I'll start out by noting that I do like the overall color scheme of the Moloch's Land Speeder. I feel like LEGO did a pretty good job of recreating what is essentially a gray blob out of the Han Solo movie so if you want to look at it that way the color scheme seems pretty correct to me. My favorite feature is the one we'll start out with and that's this little thing here and essentially it is a cage for your Karelian Hounds. You have a few studs down there which are going to allow the Karelian Hounds to stick on to and you can basically fit them both in there very easily by putting their legs down first and I have bigger hands so maybe smaller kids will have an easier time with this but it is still pretty simple for anyone to be able to fit them in there but they go in there just side by side like that very very neat actually to see them in there they have these very angry looking faces and you can still see their faces when you close down the cage so that's a really cool feature that Lego was able to include and this is actually a really cool concept for a Star Wars vehicle as well I like that they're able to have the Krillian Hounds kind of right on the outside there and then they can just release them and the Krillian Hounds can go running after whoever they're running after so that's really awesome by lego to have that able to flip open real easy and get them out so moving on to the front of the land speeder you'll notice there is something pretty distracting about the front of this thing and that's that six stud shooter those translucent green pieces are very distracting especially if you want to use this set for display so i would recommend if you're using the set for display and not for play that you go ahead and remove those green studs replace them with light gray or dark gray or you could just completely remove the stud shooter and fill it in with some bricks of your own for those of you who want to use the stud shooter for play though 
though. It's very easy to use, although I do find this to be a little bit finicky. So you have this little circle on the side here, and basically all you have to do is twist this to get them to shoot. However, I find that it's really tough to get to work. And I don't know if I built mine wrong or something, but if you go ahead and push it, it'll go ahead and shoot. You can push it again, and it will have a little bit of a harder time getting it to shoot and go back the other way. Now they seem to be shooting off just fine, but I seem to find that this is a really tough way to get your stud shooters to work. Like, it was a good idea from LEGO, but it seems to not work. Like, my fingers tend to slip on this, not get as much grip as it would when you have something to really hold on to and twist. So, that's an issue I find with this set. They tried to hide the spinner that shoots off the stud shooters, but in doing so, they kind of removed some of the effectiveness of its functionality, unfortunately. I just feel like they could have gone with the thicker things that in the past that just work a lot better you can see I just have a lot of trouble getting this thing to shoot off the studs there it seems to just be really finicky and not work all that well here we go the last one can we get it off there we go it just takes a lot more work than it normally would unfortunately but there you see it without all the studs that actually looks decent without all the studs in there you might even be able to just take them out you don't even have to replace it with anything. And then you have a little grill on top of that to kind of cover up those headlights. So that's pretty cool. You have a little exhaust vent here on top as well. And then pretty much the rest of the design of the top is flat tiles or like studs sticking out. So it's a pretty simple design on the top there. It's also got this nice curvature that curves it down to the sides there. They did a great job with that design. And then as we move to the more center area, you'll see the main cockpit area where you can go ahead and fit in your Moloch minifigure. Now remember, he does have the little dress legs, so it's still a different design inside for those. So you can just go ahead and plop him down in there very easily. It's a nice and wide design. You're not going to have any trouble getting Moloch in there at all. And you can go ahead and close up basically what is his cage, right? Like the Korean Hounds have their cage. It's a pretty similar design here for Moloch. So I do like that. I think it's a really cool design for a little cockpit area. He also has some translucent cheese slopes here, which represent the windshield, which are always very effective at that for some reason. I also like the use of other cheese slopes around him to kind of slope it into this little raised up area for his cockpit or his seating area. So that is is the whole front section of the ship. Now we have this whole other back section which kind of retains the same curvature here just kind of at a wider angle and it also has kind of a similar type of tiled and studded pattern on the top although you'll find a few more grills here a kind of different little gun piece and then even a little one by one stud tile so you'll also find that again it is expanded so you have this little space between that which actually is a pretty good design feature so you would see with like Han Solo's land speeder would just kind of be straight back but this one kind of has this extension in the back and there's a reason for that. There is some space back here. You can see the side design there. Pretty simple side design. There is some space back here, though. You have these giant-looking engines, which are very cool, with these translucent orange pieces. So you can get this thing going pretty fast. And there is this very big compartment in the back section here. That's what LEGO decided to use this space for. You can go ahead and drop this down very easily. It's on a pretty loose um, Technic pin there. And it opens and closes with ease. So you'll find that there is a little thing here with a couple of dog bones, basically a little crate here where you could have some dog food and some extra studs for your stud shooter in the front as well if you were to lose them all. You can also put Moloch's cane or whatever this is supposed to be right on the side here so you have a little extra storage area back here. It's very, very large, like I said, and it's all tiled, so this thing just kind of goes in there and kind of floats freely. It doesn't really clip in at any rate. It, unfortunately, though, you'll find that with Moloch's cane or whatever the heck this is supposed to be again, it's a little bit tough to get this to close and close snugly onto the back of it. You do have to kind of get it in there at an angle, but it will close. You'll see that it just kind of pushes it up and out of the way so that it can close up there. But I really like the rear design of this thing. It works really well. They did a cool job with the engines. They used some different techniques for this than I've really seen before in any LEGO Star Wars sets. So that is the back view. Underneath, you'll find the little wheels that have been allowing me to roll this thing along the whole time. They're pretty solid little wheels, although they do provide a lot of friction so this thing doesn't roll too far. And you'll find underneath, again, they're the small little wheels. We've seen these on many LEGO Star Wars sets before with the 2x4 axle piece. And the rest of the underneath, this ship is pretty Pretty lackluster. You only find a couple of inverted tiles as well and those basically hold on these sections with the engines attached to them because they're like separate from this middle section here so that works really well though. I really do like the way this set looks. Let's go ahead and get my final thoughts and a rating for this thing.
I find Moloch's Landspeeder to be an excellent $40 set. 464 pieces for $40 gets you well under that 10 cent per piece range that a lot of people covet, and I definitely am happy with that. The one sad thing about this set, though, is just two minifigures are included, Moloch and Rebolt, so I don't count the two Korean Hounds as real minifigures, so unfortunately for 40 bucks, you're only getting two figures, so some people may see that as a big downside. I would say if you're choosing between this set and Han Solo's Landspeeder, that I would go with Han Solo's Landspeeder. It's $10 cheaper, includes the same amount of minifigures, and you still get a Carillion Hound, and I think it has a cooler design. So, if you're choosing between the two, I would definitely go with Han Solo's Landspeeder. However, if you have 70 bucks to spare, or maybe both sets are on sale, I would totally recommend getting both. It seems like they're both going to play a pretty big part in what might be like a little chase scene in the Han Solo movie. Again, at the time of filming this review, I have not seen the movie. It's prior to its release. So, so do keep that in mind if you're watching this at a later date. Anyway, I would totally recommend getting both of these if you can. It might not be the most displayable or coolest looking ship from Star Wars A Solo Story. It honestly might be the worst of the five sets so far, although I think they're all pretty good. Even this one is probably a 7 out of 10, which means it's not bad. It's just the worst of the five. The new Moloch minifigure is incredible. I love the brand new head mold as well as the kind of dress legs that they've included. I love that new mold for the dress legs as well. And it's also really awesome that they put back printing on those legs. So that's something really cool to see. I also really like the printing on Rebolt. They got a lot of print all over him. Anyways, that's going to do it for my review of the Moloch's Landspeeder. If you guys did enjoy, go ahead and leave a like. If you're new to the channel, subscribe. And if you have any questions or comments about this set, leave in the comments section below. Thank you all for watching, guys, and I'll see you all in the next one. Peace out.